Hi, it's Michelle. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Michelle and I make videos about books. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. It really helps my channel grow. So, I've seen this video going around and I unfortunately don't know who started it, but I absolutely adore it and it is the best books that I've read according to Goodreads and the worst books I've read according to Goodreads. Today we are doing the worst. We're gonna start off with the worst. My next video will be the best but I figured this will be fun. So I'm on my Goodreads account and I'm going to ta talk about the like top 10 worst books I have read according to Goodreads. I will not be including DNFs. There's only one DNF on this list so I'm just gonna skip it, pretend like I don't see it, and I will let you know the star rating it has on Goodreads and the star rating that I gave it and just a little bit of thoughts on this book. I honestly maybe not even like remember what this book was about. So <laughs> the first book, like the 10, so the least worst, if you will, is The Outliers by Kimberly McCrete. So this, I remember, is this author's like debut YA thriller, and it was a mess. I ended up giving it three stars, which isn't that bad. The average rating on Goodreads is 3.32 which is not good. Like if I went to this book's like page right now and hit want to read but saw this low rating, I would not want to read it anymore. I, uh, from what I can remember, this girl was like kidnapped or her friend was kidnapped. It was, it was a mess. And the worst part is that I believe it's a three book series and I have other books by this author on my shelves and I'm so afraid to pick them up because like this book was a mess. I remember I got it for free though. Someone sent, like a publisher sent me the ARC and I did read it, but like, should I have? Was it worth it? No. So like, I, I do believe this book belongs on the list. Number nine is Rooms by Lauren Oliver. This book was also a mess. However, I gave it three stars. The average rating on Goodreads is 3.31, which once again is not good. I read this back in 2016. This was, this is Lauren Oliver's maybe only adult fiction, but from what I can remember is every room in this house has like a personality and they're like fighting. Anyway, I thought the concept was really good and the execution was not good. I have only ever liked the Delirium series by Ar Lauren Oliver and I recently unhauled that because I feel like if I went back and reread it, I would absolutely hate it because I read it so long ago. So like, I also believe that this belongs on the list. Okay, <laughs> the next book on this list, number eight, is Virtually Yours by Sarvanis Tash. I read this book for the lowest rated books that I owned back in 2020. I gave it one star and the average rating on Goodreads is 3.29. Uh, I can read you my Goodreads review. The only good thing about this book was the diversity of the characters. Otherwise, the main character was insufferable and I hated it is my review, so. Uh, this video is too far back. I don't think I can put it up above, but I remember I read, I think six books for this video and then I went into an immediate reading slump because all the books were so bad. This book in particular was not good, I remember. So the main character is going to college and her high school boyfriend breaks up with her nicely because they're like on opposite sides of the United States now for college and she goes into this like virtual reality thing and like catfishes him. That's all I remember. It was absolutely, I do not recommend that one. The next one is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I gave this four stars. It has an average rating of 3.27. I really like this one. I will say I have only read it that one time and people, I like I looked at other reviews when it had more reviews. I read it like right when it came, the week it came out and I understand why people don't like this. However, 
I like this. It's like told backwards. And I thought like that was the first time I had ever read a book like that. And I thought that was so cool. But I don't know, I stand by it. Honestly, I, I haven't read it. I read it back in 2017 and 2017 Michelle is a whole different Michelle than 2020, 20, what, what year is it? 2022 Michelle. So like I, I get it. I'm never gonna reread it. So like, but I stand by my four stars. I'm not gonna change it. Okay. The next book on this list is Wildcat by Amelia Morris. I actually read this this year. I gave it four stars. <laughs> the average rating is 3.26. So the reason that I read this book is because I needed to review it for my city's website. I am a book reviewer for my city's website and this is the book I needed to review. I liked it but I understand why people didn't like it. This book was absolutely written with COVID in mind and the vaccine debate. So if you are on the other side, like if you are on one side of the debate than the other, you are not going to like it because it is very pro-vaccine. So like I, I don't even want to look at the reviews, honestly, if I'm being, I, I'm just gonna pretend like I do not see this book. And it was honestly so hard for me to review without like putting that this was all about COVID vaccines because it was, it was rough. this was a rough book to review personally. I liked it though, uh, but I absolutely do, do not recommend it for everyone. Like I understand why people don't like it also. So the main character like gets into her best friend's Instagram account and starts like emailing people from her Instagram account and it is uh like not a good look so like I I get it for my purposes it was okay you know like I'm not gonna read it again but I understand Ugh. okay the next book is again again once again by E. Lockhart and once again I gave it four stars <laughs> the rating for this one is 3.17 once again, oh god, I read this as an arc and I really liked it. It was like an alternate universe, like if the main character had done one thing then this wouldn't have happened, then it goes back and if she had changed it then this wouldn't have happened and I liked it and it has such poor reviews and oh no. Oh no. I remember that my friend Jordan read it right when I came out because he saw that I gave it four stars and he did not like it. So, but I like this one. I can't believe it has such poor reviews. But I, I understand like E. Lockhart's writing is so weird. Even in her uh, Ruby Oliver series, like it is weird and that's a contemporary so like I understand but like also I'm sad because I really like this book. Next is <laughs> Girls in White Dresses by Jennifer Close. I read this in 2016. I gave it one star and the average rating is 3.15. I remember distinctly reading this one. This is a book about like 20 somethings living in New York City during Obama's presidency and they're just like talk it's like commentary about marriage and it was so political and it was like my side of politics and I still hated every single second of it like I just like don't like to read about politics anyway this book really sucked I believe I had like so this was back when I was listening 2016 and I was still listening to books on CDs anyway I believe I had like one it was told in like stories i think i had like one or two stories left and i i i shut it off and gave it one star and i stand by it i do not recommend this book absolutely awful so bad deserves the low rating next is what we left behind by robin tally i gave this four stars i also read this back in 2016 and it has an average rating of 3.11 which is not good. Looking back, I can see why this has such low reviews because of one of the main characters' identity that comes out for them and people did not like it. And Naive 2016 Michelle liked it, but 
I know if I went back and reread it, which I never will, I would not like it. It is not good representation of trans characters at all. Like trans people, it is it is not not good. So like I understand this rating. But enjoyment wise, I liked it. So like I understand. I would never reread it. And I don't recommend it for trans anything. Like don't you know. We're almost done. This is number nine. <laughs> this is The Woods Are Always Watching by Stephanie Perkins. I gave this two stars, which I feel is nice, and the average rating is 3.09. My Goodreads review for this one is petitioned for Perkins to write romance again. <laughs> uh, listen, I adore the Anna and the French Kiss series. I don't care how cringy they are. I love them. I especially love Isla and the Happily Ever After and I stand by it. I don't care. This, like, there's someone inside your house and the woods are always watching. They are not, they are not it. Like, she's trying so hard to get onto the YA mystery thriller tra train because there's not a lot of YA mystery and thriller, but she's not good at it. Ugh. I know that sounds so mean, but it's true. So, did anyone like this book? Let me know. And last, but absolutely not least, the worst book that I have ever read. And it absolutely is the worst book that I've ever read. So, here we go. That is The Betrothed by Kiera Cass. I gave this book one star. It has an average rating of three. Solid three. Three, that's it. Let me read you my whole review. Yikes. My problem with this book is that there was no plot. The love interests were bland and it was not convincing at all that anyone loved each other. I didn't DNF this because I heard about the ending and let me just say, it wasn't worth not DNFing. Past Michelle would go back and DNF. Correct. It, the book is so short. It's like 250 pages maybe. Uh, it says that I read it and it took me two days to read a 250 page book. No, it's not good. I don't know what to say about this book other than I love the selection series. At least the first three books, those are the only ones that I read. So the trilogy, I stand by it. This, I don't know who the publisher was. I feel like it was Epic Reads and they they really, really did a good job of marketing this book. They would not shut up about it. The cover is beautiful. They posted the cover everywhere on Twitter. And I was like, hell yes. I love Kira Cass. I love this selection. I love this so much. This book is absolutely the worst book that I have ever read. So I believe, okay, so I read it in 2020. It was the worst, it was on my worst books of 2020 video. I have tried to block it out from my mind but it is just so bad that I just keep like having flashbacks of how bad it was. So anyway, Goodreads is correct and The Betrothed is the worst book that I have ever read according to Goodreads. So yeah, so what I can say is that I don't really recommend any of these books. Maybe like the only one I would recommend is Again Again. I liked Again Again. <laughs> like I, I really liked Again Again. But it is told in such a weird way that I understand if people were like not on with the writing. I liked it. So I stand, I stand by Again Again. But if you can save yourself from any of these other books, please do. Just like, it's it's not worth it, okay? It's not worth it. Especially The Betrothed. Like, I cannot even tell you how bad that book was, so. So, these are the worst books that I have read according to Goodreads. I would say for the most part, Goodreads is correct. And yeah, so that's it. Thanks so much for watching my video. See you in the next one, which will be the best books that I read according to Goodreads. Very excited to do that one. More positive videos. <laughs> Bye. Mm -hmm.